on clear nights, I like to watch the sky. And not to admire the galaxy or to look for certain stars or planets. No, I'm looking for something else. Tiny lights, barely visible among the stars. Moving slowly, but deliberately. Almost artificial. And in fact, they are artificial. Man-made and put in orbit to work for us. I'm talking about satellites. And while satellites come in many flavors, my favorites are the ones that, when we look at those tiny lights, they look back at us. And they see us much more clearly. They might, for example, see this. This is an image of the northern parts of the Netherlands and the North Sea, uh, the Dutch islands in it. And I think it's really beautiful. But I know for a fact that none of you is going to tweet about it tonight. Why? Because in the 60s, these were spectacular spy tools. But nowadays, we can look up any spot on the globe within seconds on our phone, right? Companies, governments, individuals, we all use satellite images without second thoughts. And in fact, we are so used to them that we often forget that there's more than a human eye can see. I believe that satellite images are today more interesting and more relevant than ever before. And I'll tell you why. Firstly, because these images are still getting sharper every year and for a cheaper price. And also because they come more frequently, and nowadays already spanning the whole globe multiple times a day. But there are more profound reasons. And for the first one, I would like to ask you a question, and I want to invite you to, to speak your mind. So what do you see, what, what do you think is happening in this image? Does anyone have an idea? It's changing color, right? What's happening? Why? Temp temperature? Yeah, that's close. It's not entirely. Anyone else? Okay. So it's clearly color, right? So let's talk about color. I've got another question for you. How many colors are in this image? Shout out. 80. Well, could be right. Someone else? Higher guess? Lower? Lower. Three. Uh, that's, that's an answer I like. Because it could be true, depending on whether you ask the eyes or the brain. Because when I look at you, you look back at me, our eyes actually see only three colors. The human eye is sensitive to red light, to green light, and to blue light. But when that information from the eye enters the brain, the brain magically mixes it up and interprets it into thousands or even millions of colors. Which is amazing, right? So if I take one of the colors of your eye away, you'll experience a big loss of information. And if I take two colors away, you're left with only a very basic contrast. Now, if I give you colors back first, uh, or information reappears first, um, yellow, orange, green and brown come back, and then blue, purple and pink. But what if the eye could see a fourth color? What extra colors would the brain see? So, For a very short moment, try to imagine a color you've never seen before. Can anyone? I would love to meet this person. <laughs> no, it's impossible, right? Because we are limited by our anatomy. But is this a nonsense question? No. Because there are so many colors we cannot see. Even in this room, every object, every human being is sending out thermal radiation containing information about the temperature. There's many infrared colors, there's many ultraviolet colors. Even the Wi-Fi signal here can be considered light with an invisible color. And while we only see three colors, satellites looking at the Earth currently see more than ten, and this number is steadily rising. And with a small trick, I can show you what they see. So which island is this? Yeah, right in one second. It's the Dutch island uh, Terschelling. And here it's shown in, uh, in regular colors. Free beer, by the way, for you. <laughs> um, 
And in regular colors, it's already beautiful. But the satellite that took this image sees much more. For example, also many infrared colors. And if I would take these infrared colors, I can revisualize them in red, green, and blue so that we can appreciate it. And it will be a completely different color or a completely different image. So I want you to focus on. Um, uh, all right, that was a bit too early. But um, I want you to focus on, on, on uh, uh, the, the, the. Yeah, here, thank you. On the, on the dark green patches on the island, which are forests. And if I show you in infrared, <laughs> suddenly they show much more color range. Yeah, there it is. On the other hand, if you look at the southern part of the island, which is the agricultural fields, they now look an even light bluish. And when I show the picture in regular colors again, you'll see there's much more color range now. So this shows that different colors contain different information about the Earth. And this is all nice and fine that I can visualize this to you, but we can still not appreciate all these colors at once. Plus, they don't come naturally and intuitively to us. And this brings me to the main reason why satellite images are, in my opinion, so interesting today. Because it's not the satellite images themselves, but the way we analyze them that has changed very suddenly over the last few years. When we use computers to do data analysis, we have always told them what patterns to look for. Until recently. Because since a few years, there's an alternative called machine learning. And machine learning, in machine learning, we do something else. We don't tell computers what to do. We teach them how to learn. And we don't provide them with rules. We provide them with examples, and we let them deter determine their own rules and patterns. So the outcome is not human intelligence or expertise captured in computer code. It's a computer with intelligence of its own. And whether you know it or not, this computer intelligence is already all around us. If, if you exit the car park and a camera re registers your license plate, if you take a photo and your iPhone suggests who's on the photo, or when your face is recognized at the airport, it's all based on the same machine learning principles. Now, I'm a, ch I'm a teacher, but I don't teach human beings. I teach computers, and I teach them how to learn from satellite images. I teach them how to think in 10 colors. And I teach them how to recognize patterns that humans overlook. So what material do I need for my class? I need information about what, when, and where. Let's say the Dutch police wants to detect illegal cannabis fields. If I know when and where cannabis was growing, I can take the corresponding satellite images and cut out examples of cannabis. And if I own also cut out examples of not cannabis, and my computer is able to recognize patterns that are unique for the cannabis, I'm in business, right? Because then I can let this computer look at other images in the future and let it look for exactly these same patterns. So another example, a very similar one I'm currently working on, is the protection of natural uh, reserves. So to protect our nature, we need to know exactly what vegetation is growing in certain areas and what its health, health is. And in the Netherlands alone, we're talking about hundreds of large areas, of which Teschelling is uh, just one. Now, currently, a human in a thorough inspection covering this whole area is performed once every 12 years. It's simply because it's too expensive to do it more often. And the issue here is human scalability, or the scalability of human work. Now, what do I mean with scalability? It's that if a human needs to cover twice the area, it's twice the amount of work. If we want to do it three times more often, it's three times the amount of work. And this is why computer intelligence based on satellite images can be so powerful. Because if we can teach a computer to look at a certain area and judge it, it can as easily judge another area, or a whole region, or a country. And it can do it once every 12 years, or yearly, monthly, or even daily if we needed to. Now, the applications don't stop with vegetation. 
not by far. So, in fact, every problem with the spatial components is a potential candidate. We can use this technique to <coughs> inspect the quality of our roads, inspect our dikes, detect damage after natural disasters, detect illegal building activities for a whole country at, at once, or look for asbestos on all rooftops at once. So these and many more wonderful applications are being worked out as we speak. But like with all technology, there's also the risk of misusage, especially when we let computer intelligence look for more complex patterns in very large data sets. It might learn things about us we don't want it to. If computers can track the usage of your car, <coughs> and if they can see whether your light is on during the night, if it can judge your neighborhood and decide what is the type and the condition of your house and garden, it can tell something about your financial situation. So it's not unimaginable that a bank using such a system would deny you a loan or a mortgage, and you will never know the reason is that you keep garbage in your backyard. What's worse, the bank itself might not know. Because remember, we are talking computer intelligence here, based on rules and patterns that don't necessarily translate to human uh, uh, intuition. The good news is that this is a future scenario. So we have got time to discuss how we want to use this technique and how we can avoid pitfalls and issues. Because the possibilities are so vast, nearly endless, and if we use satellite images wisely, they will not only change the way we look at the Earth, they can change the way we take care of it. Thank you. <laughs>